Hello there YouTube. I'm not where I usually am because my neighbours having their windows fitted. So I've come out to a, a nice spot about a mile away from where I live. And uh feel a bit conscious doing it outside. But anyway, this video is about um the humanoids that God created before Adam and Eve. So, put yourself in God's position. You've got a whole load of new eternal beings that um, haven't become aware of themselves yet, yet they exist. And you need to uh, introduce them to themselves and you've got this physical universe where you've been playing for billions of years. So you make this, you have this planet with life on, and because so God is every living thing in the universe except us God is God is the life force in all the grass and all the plants and the animals but so an animal has a, his own brain but they're limited in what they can do they don't sit there and think about what they are, but instinctively, deep down, they know they are God, but they're not thinking about that. They're just doing what they instinctively do. Um, so before God was ready to create Adam and Eve and put, for the first time, one of these new souls for them to become aware God was experimenting with humanoids God made the Neanderthals and God would have been living each one of those lives and God made some other humanoids around the planet that are known to have died out completely. So God was making them as an experiment to see what sort of limitations they had. And what I've recently come to the conclusion, or let's say it's, it's something I'm running with at the moment, is that God made some humans who were capable of a lot more than any humans he'd made before. Humanoids, let's say. And these humanoids were probably fully in possession of the knowledge that they were in fact the God. And they could well be the angels. I'm not saying they are, but they could be. Like the, the archangels, Uriel, Gabriel, Michael, those ones. And there'd be women, obviously. Women are the boss. So, they built pyramids. And they built Tiwanaka, where, in South America, where they've basically plasticized stone. They got to that level of technology. There's, there's all sorts of um, signs that they were using very high, fast spinning cutting blades to cut a lot of these rocks. There's marks on them. But these other rocks, they see they'd turn them into like a, a moldable thing and were able to bend them round corners and fit them in. I mean, amazing, amazing. Now, 
what puzzled me about this before was both these places appear to be unfinished. Now the Great Pyramid looks like it's very nearly finished, but there's a shaft which isn't complete. Now I first of all thought, well if if it was God actually building it, it would be perfect and it wouldn't be unfinished or incomplete. And why why would they stop? I, I still I haven't figured out that, but there does seem to have been some major cataclysm. But what I'm getting the feeling is that something else took their attention away from finishing it, or they're meant to be unfinished, in a sense that they don't become active until they're finished should be interesting but that something might have come up um, and they needed to go and I'm still not sure whether they've whether they've um, been watching us whether God finished the use of them and they just killed themselves <laughs> or whether they hopped onto another planet and I don't know yet but I am pretty sure, because before I was thinking, you know, could Adam and Eve, had, could they have had some great power that enabled them to make something like the Great Pyramid? So now I'm thinking, no, they were probably very close to God at the beginning in terms of feeling and soul and everything. But... I'm pretty sure that some other humanoids that God made built these pyramids and Tiwanaka, those stone structures, which uh, they both have something in common in the sense that they've got this sort of structural l shape uh, stones that means that these places will withstand serious, serious, like, earthquakes and stuff and would still survive. And I feel like that's the intention that God meant for these structures to be here throughout all of our, so far, 6,000-odd years so that we we would have this question mark, this this mystery, this absolute definite mystery of, who made that? You know, you can't say it's a natural phenomenon that made it. It's definitely made with, you know, physically made. So, not that there aren't enough mysteries, but that there had to be something like that. So if you want to stick around, I'm going to just smoke spleef and um and I might talk about some other things I think I can hear some people coming which might make me a bit ooh, scary I don't know if um, my iPhone can do long videos we'll see I mean, yeah, part of me was thinking, did they, did, was Nibiru coming round and they had to jump on it? I've always thought the pyramids, great pyramids, got something to do with space travel. Yeah, and a lot of these other pyramids are already falling down. I think some of them are quite a bit smaller. They're bound to be copies, you know. Here, here's this thing that's been here ever since we know. But, um, you know, so they tried to copy it. That, that makes quite a lot of sense. Do you want to 
okay? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. Sure? Yeah. Okay. Are you? Yeah, thank you. No school today? Um, no, we have inset day. Oh, lucky you. I know, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking on my way over <coughs> a comment I'd made that the moon moods, well, the, let's call it the mood cycle of two years, two months, two moons and two days. And, you know, if this, I'm saying it's big because if this was common knowledge, um, you know, you'd be, people wouldn't be going to the marriage counsellor to ask them why, why they got problems. You'd know where you are in your mood thing, so you'd be able to say, look, or to yourself, you know, the reason I'm feeling shit is because I'm going down in my moods, but by one o'clock in the afternoon, I'm gonna start coming up again. And, you know, for women now, who've just come over the top of their their yearly one so you have to adjust to the fact that yes now I'm I'm gonna be coming down for the next year but you're up anyway so it's not gonna be depressing and for the ones for men now you know we've been at our rock bottom and we're gonna be coming up for the next year <laughs> that feels good because yeah we're at our rock bottom and the fact that, you know, with the months as well, means that it's not, you know, it's not just all this for the next year for the girls either, because when they're coming up on their moon, the moon slightly outweighs the year. So they're still going to be coming up, feeling like they're coming up, but not as fast as we men are coming up. While we're coming up on our year and our month, we're going to be coming up fast. And because of the daily one, the daily one is strong enough to counteract so if you're coming down on your month and your year but you're coming up on your day one you'll still be coming up but day after day after day you realize you know you're not you gradually you are going down um so it is really big really big and uh I'm pretty convinced that I've got the right timings. Um, but I'll keep posted on that. Those kids probably thought I was talking to myself. Probably heard me. Inset day, they call it now. Never called it that. It's always teacher's training day. What the world needs now Love, sweet love No, not just for some But for everyone <laughs> Well, I can't think of anything else to say, so That'll be bye. <laughs>